On this episode, we apply the famous Dungeons and Dragons character alignment chart to Bangkok. So if you've ever wondered where Bangkok falls on the axis of good and evil and lawful and chaotic, you'll dig this episode of the Bangkok Podcast. So what the crap and welcome to the Bangkok Podcast. My name is Greg Jorgensen, a Canadian who came to Thailand in 2001 to get away from the time-honored winter tradition of going to work when it's dark and coming home when it's dark. <laughs> right, right. <sighs> and I'm Ed Knuth, an American who came to Thailand on a one-year teaching contract 21 years ago. Fell in love with trying to figure out why Thai people like Siberian Huskies so much. So I never left. I guess you can't really blame them. I mean, they are a lovable dog, but Thailand They're, ain't the country for a husky. That's right. It's uh, it's just kind of odd. I've always thought it was perplexing. You know, it's it's on my list of things that I just don't get about Thailand. You know, it's like there's just these odd quirks. You know, uh, many of the many of them that we've talked about on the show. But it's like of all the breeds of dogs, like the last one you would expect to see is a, a Siberian husky. And I mean, it's it's not the most popular dog here, but it's it's surprisingly popular. Like it's Thai people love them, and they're all they're around. You know, it's like a dude who's terrified of water going to live on a houseboat. Like maybe you think <laughs> of a different environment for yourself. <laughs> that's right. That's right. All right. We want to say a quick thank you to one of our patrons, Dustin McKay, who supports us at the show shoutout level. Stick around after we're done talking about Bangkok's alignment chart to hear why Dustin is going to give us lessons on how to be badasses. Finally. Really, uh, we want to give a big thanks to all of our patrons who support the show. Patrons got a whole bunch of cool stuff, including our ad-free regular show a day early, behind the scenes photos and videos of our interviews, discounts on swag, access to our Discord server, and various other things that aren't available to regular listeners. But best of all, patrons like Dustin also get an unscripted, uncensored bonus episode every week where we riff on current events and random topics. We just finished recording this week's bonus show, and we chatted about whether or not, allegedly, vendors along Sukhumwit are, supposedly, already openly selling booze. The confusing new ad by the TAT that sells Thailand's reopening to the world? Possibly. And the unfortunate and quite frankly ridiculous verdict in a court case against hospitals who charge patients based on perceived income. To become a patron, head to bangkokpodcast.com forward slash support. Right on. Well, hey guys, before we jump into it, we want to mention that we do have a line account for the podcast. And check this out, Ed. I checked, I checked this out just before we started recording because I actually sent out a message to all of our friends online, a funny little meme. And we're up to 447 friends now. That's pretty good. That's that's a lot. Yeah. So thanks to everyone for joining. And hey, um, it's been a while since we heard from you, since we got some voicemails. So if you have line and you are a friend of the Bangkok podcast, uh, hit that little microphone button and record yourself. Send us a message. Say hi. Tell us what's going on. Tell us where you're at. And uh, we'll play it on the show because we always like doing that and hearing from people all around the world. Definitely. Okay. On this episode, we are going to get geeky taking inspiration from a blog post that I wrote a few years ago, back when I was still geeky. Now, I think we can all agree that part of what makes Bangkok such a cool place is that it's very hard to define. Is it old or is it new? Is it good or bad, cheap or expensive? Trying to figure that out is part of what keeps us here. And this is something I'm kind of fascinated with. And so a while ago, I had the bright idea, what if I tried to break Bangkok down by using the ubiquitous alignment chart used in the iconic board game Dungeons and Dragons. Dude, man, when you when you brought up this concept, uh, I, I love it. Um, it. It's funny, Dungeons and Dragons is one of those things that it, it was just a huge part of my life when I was in junior high school. So I don't know what it was, maybe like a three year window where you're just, just <laughs> yeah. I was living, I was living and dying by it. But then now it's, I never got back to it, you know? It's, so it's just this, for me, it's this 
I just iconic youthful thing. And yeah. so for you to bring it up, for you, for you to pull it out of the ether um, <laughs> and say you wanted to use it, um, I appreciate it. I appreciate it. Yeah, it was an interesting idea. And I, I, I like sort of straining Bangkok, Bangkok through different filters. In this in this case, it was a D and D one. Oh, I like that. That's very abstract. You like that? Now, bear with me for a minute while I explain for those who are too cool or too young to understand this. Um, <laughs> now, when playing D- Dungeons and Dragons or D and D, as it's commonly known, players can decide the ethical and moral makeup of their created characters, which guides their actions throughout the game. Now, this is called a character alignment, and your character falls into one of nine categories. It's done on two axes. On the X axis, you have lawful, neutral, and chaotic. And on the Y axis, you have good, neutral, and evil, giving you categories such as lawful, neutral, or chaotic, good. This was my first exposure to moral philosophy. Really? (laughs) Yeah, I mean, no, I mean, you know, because in in junior high, you're not studying ethics or moral philosophy or anything like that, you know. So, I mean, of course, maybe I got something, something out of going to church, but I mean, just... You know, this idea of organizing people into good and bad, but then on another axis, being lawful or chaotic, that was mind blowing. Oh my God, you could be <laughs> lawful, you know, but, you know, but, but, but bad, you know, like you're a bad, like the strict bad empire following strict evil rules and right. regulations. That like would I, be lawful I have, evil. I have to whip you. These are the rules. <laughs> <laughs> right. <laughs> but then but then you can have, uh, you know, p- people that are just, quote unquote, chaotic or they're not following rules. And I like the idea that you can have chaotic good, kind yeah. of spontaneous, kind of spontaneously good, like not <laughs> not follow the rules good. So this is this is, again, it's particularly nerdy and not I understand not everyone's going to be into this, but I think it's a pretty interesting way to define Bangkok on these categories. And, you know, people have applied this rule to everything, to Harry Potter, to Star Wars, to every sort of cultural group of people. They've it is a meme. Yeah, they've been ranked on this on this alignment chart. So what we're going to do is um, we're going to recap my original blog post and go through which elements of Bangkok fit these alignments, moving down the list from lawful good to chaotic evil. So obviously, we're going to start with lawful good. Now, Ed, in case you don't remember from your your halcyon days of youth when you were palling around with your zit faced buddies around the D&D board. A <laughs> lawful good character typically acts with compassion and always with honor and a sense of duty. Right? Okay. I remember that. I do yeah. remember that. So for, for my blog post, I assigned this to most monks. In you know, I like this answer. Um, I think that in general, Thai people are super casual and they never, f- they never feel like they're really trying to follow the rules. You know, but but monks, they do have very specific rules that they mostly follow. You know, they don't touch women. Obviously, you know, they they can't drink alcohol. They have to dress a certain way. And so clearly compared to most people in Thailand, they have to be the most lawful good. Right. Yeah, I think so. And obviously not not every monk is lawful good. Of course, we always hear stories of, you know, the bad monks and stuff like that. But as a as a group of people. Yeah, no, I like I like the way you said most monks instead of <laughs> yeah, all monks. All monks um, yeah. yeah, so it's it's kind of a, a I, I mean it's sad, but it's just a, it's just kind of this undeniable fact that um, you know it's funny when I when I interact with Thai people and we talk about mm-hmm. monks, they it, the, almost always there's a sense I get from them that they're they're like well they're not all good you know it's like I never get this just outright reverence for monks. Right. There's always the there's always the asterisk, you know. <laughs> there's always I don't know. an asterisk in Thailand. Yeah, I don't know if it's I don't know if it's ten percent of them, twenty percent, but whether it's corruption or or whatever, you know, the, it, it's quite well known that it's <laughs> they're not all lawful good. <laughs> all right, so moving down the list, next we go to neutral good, and the definition of neutral good is has no problems with cooperating with lawful officials, but does not feel beholden to them. And for this one, I put Bangkok drivers. Ooh, I like it. Again, yeah. dude. Now you know. The, you know. Just to clarify for listeners, uh, this is uh, this comes from something Greg wrote, wrote years ago. Yeah. So I'm just kind of I'm com- I'm commentating on Greg. So I've, I haven't seen this stuff before, but I like this because I think that Bangkok drivers um, are are willing to break the law, but they're also willing to follow the law. So. I do think that they would be like neutral in that respect. Like Bangkok drivers are very opportunistic. They're not, you know, they're not crazy all the time, but exactly. Um, yeah. That we, we, we know that so many of the laws are not enforced. 
that is just like there's just something you generally know if you're a driver you know right. that okay you don't really have to stop here this is what we just said on the bonus show a few minutes ago that we recorded just before this if you if everyone followed all of the traffic rules in bangkok you'd get into an accident <laughs> immediately but I, I think I mean I'm a Bangkok driver, and I think for the most part we all want to be safe. We all want to get to where we're going, and we want to make sure that everyone else gets to where they're going. But you know, like hey, maybe this says can't do a U-turn, but I'll just do a quick U-turn. No one's going to notice. And, yeah, that's, you know, I'm, right, I'm not, that's right. I'm not supposed to park here to go into Seven Eleven, but just just for a minute, and I'll put my blinkers on. It's all right. So <laughs> neutral, good. Most of the time we follow the laws, but we're not going to live and die by them. <laughs> right. Sure. Okay. And on the bottom of the good scale, we have chaotic good. And a chaotic good character favors change for greater good, disdains bureaucracy that gets in the way of social improvement and places high value on personal freedom, generally disorganized and often out of alignment with the rest of society. And uh, for me, there was only one thing that fell into this, and that was Kalsan Road. Okay. My only, uh, I guess my asterisk would be maybe the Kalsan Road of old. Like the, I, you know, you know, I I feel like Thailand doesn't have a genuine hippie scene either among foreigners coming in or among Thais. Like I, I feel I feel like the Khao San of old, or at least in my mind, the mythical Khao San, mm -hmm. where you got a where everyone was like a young Joe Cummings. You know, everyone was like <laughs> everyone was like a a cool backpacker, like you know, dreadlocks you know I mean? down to their ass. And stuff. That, that's right. Yeah, but but they're basically good people into wanting to have cool experiences, but they're not into the law. So that's that is chaotic good. Yeah, you know, that's interesting. Like the hippie, though, like the hippie, the hippie is chaotic good, like totally kind hearted. But yeah, you know, we get stoned all the time. You know, <laughs> you know, right. that's you know, a willingness to break the law. High but, value on personal freedom and often right. out of alignment with the rest of society. So I, I think you're right. I think if there's any part of, well, in a way, to, to be honest, you could make this point. I'm going to get a little meta here. Oh, all right. But in a way, I think a lot of Thai culture is actually cat good because in general, Thai people are not that respectful of the rules. They, they follow them a lot, but then in other times, it's as if they don't exist. But I think Thai people often are good hearted. So I'm going to say this. Thai people are chaotic good. Chaotic good in the entire country. That's a bold statement. How's that for going deep? <laughs> That's an interesting uh, discrepancy you brought up, like Khao San of old versus Khao San of new. That's a show right there. We've got to do a new one when things get back I feel on, like I feel like, you know, board. and this what just, you know, places get gentrified. Corporations buy up the territory, you know. So it ends up being not about independence. It ends up being about big corporations of the government trying to manufacture Hipness. Well, it's the, it's the Apple argument, right? Apple used to be the little guy fighting against the man. Now it's the man's right. man. Right? That's, that's right. That's right. Anyway, um, I, I think Kausan's not a bad answer as long as we're talking about Kausan of, of old. Kausan of old. All right. Next, we go to lawful neutral. Now, this character believes strongly in concepts such as honor, order, rules and tradition and often follows a personal code typically enforces strict laws to maintain social order and places a high value on traditions and historical precedent and for this one i wrote this years and years ago when i was a teacher so i put the thai education system genius dude i'm waiting for the I'm, I'm waiting i'm waiting for you to have a really bad answer um but th th this is genius because it is tempting to maybe look at these stories of uh uh, Thai teachers like smacking their students. Right. It, 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 when you look at that, sometimes you want to say, okay, that's lawful evil. But but I agree. I agree with you putting it in lawful neutral because I think these are, you know, these people, most Thai teachers and educators is, they really are there for the benefit of the students and they think they're doing good for the students. Right. And they're really just bureaucrats and, and you know, who are just doing what they're told. So, you know, obviously most of the time they're not abusing students, you know, so there's, I'm sure, you know, you know, so there's plenty of good experiences that Thai students have. It's just, there seems to be this slavish devotion to like, your hair's got to be how it was in the 1950s, your skirt's got to be this. And right. And if, if, proper... if, the, if the teachers hit students, oftentimes it doesn't make the news or doesn't get reported because it's historical precedent. They've, all, they've always hit students. They've always had this right. sort of outsized right. power over the students. Yeah. So I like, I like you know, lawful neutral is kind of following the rules just for rules sake. Right. You know, and it's sometimes going to have a good effect, sometimes it's going to have a bad effect, but it's just 
Follow right. the rules. And if someone says, so, why, why don't we change things and update it? They go, because we've always done it this way, and that's it. <laughs> okay, it, I like that. I like that. All it's right, funny, it's funny you mentioned the haircut, because this, this is something that I did mention in this blog that I wrote about this, uh, which we'll link to in the show notes. But um, when I was teaching, one of the girls cut her hair a bit too short. One of the students in my class, she cut her hair too short. Too short. too short. Too so short. It's normally too. It's normally too long, right? Yeah. That's the problem. Yeah. But this girl cut it too short, so they made her wear a wig in class. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> she, dude, she looked like Joan Jett from 1984. <laughs> that looks pretty good, actually. <laughs> well, <laughs> no, she, she was my first rock and roll crush, but this girl looked ridiculous. <laughs> just this fake wig sticking straight up. That's so depressing. Well, I, you know, I've I've told this story before, but um, I had an experience at my university where I had an exchange student, a foreign student, who was an American woman in her forties, and right. she just uh, she her her kids I think had gone to college, and she had never finished university herself, so she went to university. Good for her. Um, decided to do an exchange year, so I have a, a, a whatever middle aged you know woman, uh, American woman. And she showed up at the midterm exam, and uh, she wasn't wearing like the proper uniform, and and no one had filled her in because she, so she wasn't actually an exchange student in my department. She was in another department, and they just they just left her out to dry, and like she didn't know any. No one told her like you know you got to follow these uniform rules when you go to the exams, oh, and uh, so she got uh, so basically they 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 dinged her like they wouldn't they wouldn't let her take the midterm, and then I so. She came to me because she was a student of mine, and I, I ended up, I, I convinced them to let her retake them a week later. So in the end, she got barred, but she didn't fail. Yeah, there we go. Can't take an exam without the right uniform. Value, traditions, and historical precedent. All right, next is uh, the middle of the chart, true neutral. Now, true neutral characters tend not to feel strongly towards any alignment and are guided by instinct rather than conscious decision. So here I put the ubiquitous soy dog. Damn. Um, I like it. Uh, I like it. Um, They're certainly selfish. Yeah, but they're not, they're not aligned to anyone. They're just, they're, they're a hundred percent out for themselves. Um, They're scrappy. So would they be chaotic? But Maybe, maybe maybe they have instincts like dogs tend to act in a certain way. Huh. No, but a, okay, I, I, I think this. a chaotic character uh, wants to do something for their own, for, like for the for, you know to 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 benefit their own situation. I mean, dogs are just out to survive. Ah, oh, okay, I like that. I like yeah. that. Okay, so. I'll buy that. I'll I mean, buy I'll, that. Most of the time, we love soy dogs. They're usually pretty harmless unless you're on a bike ride and they chase after you. And that's one of the scariest well, parts of a bike ride, dude. When you're just riding along and you hear behind you, you hear this like. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The little fingernails on the. On but the you know, all things considered, in my opinion, Bangkok dogs—they're mostly just like lying down, trying to trying to live, trying to survive, like in <laughs> exactly. the heat. You know, yeah. you know. So compared to dog, <laughs> compared to dogs back home, they're pretty. They're pretty like like oh, I don't know what the right word is. You know, they just they just look like oppressed. <laughs> yeah, like all right, I got enough food to survive the day. Now just try to figure out how to get through the day without dying of heat. Yeah, just leave me alone. Just leave me alone, right? <laughs> All right, next is Chaotic Neutral. Now, this one might be a little bit out of date because this blog post that I wrote was at least 12 years ago. Um, Chaotic Neutral character is an individualist who follows his or her own heart and generally shirks rules and traditions. Although they promote the ideals of freedom, it is their own freedom that comes first. And for this, I put the one and only Chewit Kamonsawit. Chewit, Chewit. (laughs) <laughs> what do you think of this well no i think this is good uh have we have we had a separate history lesson about him i don't think we did no i've thought i've asked, thought about getting him on the show actually that'd be wild but uh oh, that'd be great um maybe maybe he's <laughs> maybe worth a bit a, too hot uh, maybe uh, uh, what, let, let, let's use chew it for for a, a history lesson maybe because it's just just the, his story like his his biography we got to do that but yeah. in short in short he's a former massage parlor tycoon who decided to expose a bunch of corrupt cops that he was paying bribes to and um he he had a very public like he has a very public personality like in front of the camera personality and it just became this big spectacle and he he just had press conferences where I, i remember seeing this stuff back in the day and i i my jaw was really dropping yeah because he's got a he's in a press conference which you've seen 
but he's got a, he's got a, a a bulletin board like an excel spreadsheet and he's got the names of the cops and how much he's paid them per month yeah. and he's just got he, he's just publicly saying all right i paid joe smith like this amount of paid and he's got dates he's just and you're just like videos wait, from his this? massage parlors yeah you're like wait is this is this happening for real like it, <laughs> it, it it you're like no one ever does this no one ever names names and just says yeah here. yeah and he's admitting you know he's admitting to being corrupt yeah, he'll you know, just, he, I just he'll just throw a bomb right into the middle of any situation and be like, "Yeah, come at me! I got the records, man! I got them going back years. Like, do your worst." Well, the, the twist of the you. whole thing, the twist of the whole thing is he ended up going into politics because he's just this weird, crazy character. Um, and he now, what is his current status? Is he still a member of Thai Parliament? I don't think so. I think he's getting pretty old now. He must be in his eighties now. So, okay. Well, anyway, I, I you know. I, I think chaotic neutral is perfect because, you know, I don't want to go into details and because I don't even know the truth, but like prior to even all that, he was accused of beating his wives. Like he, he's a very unusual character. And, and so the idea that you have him as chaotic neutral, I think fits. Yeah, I think so. He, uh, he's an individualist. Uh, he promotes the ideals of freedom, but it is their own freedom that comes first. Yeah. I think that sticks in line. For sure. Yeah. All right, on to lawful evil. Now, a lawful evil character sees a well-ordered system as being easier to exploit and shows a combination of desirable and undesirable traits. While they usually obey superiors and keep their word, they are not averse to twisting the rules to work in their favor. And for this one, I put the dreaded corrupt police officer. Damn it, dude, you're nailing this stuff. Because <laughs> uh, because I think, you know, the Joe Ferrari case is just so... It's perfect because it's 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 a parody of what people think is going on, and I, I I've had this <laughs> problem. Right, yeah. You know what I'm saying? I've had this problem where um, sometimes I, you know, someone says to me, "Oh my god, like, uh, uh, you know, Thailand is so corrupt. Like, there's just corruption everywhere." And then and then I want to defend Thailand and say, "Dude, that's just a myth. Of course, there is some corruption here and some corruption there. Every country has some corruption. Yeah, you know, yeah. But just because you know." everyone says something's true doesn't mean it's really true but then you get a story like the joe ferrari case where you have a like a cop who's who's supposedly making what forty thousand baht a month and he's worth like 15 million us dollars <laughs> right How did that <laughs> and, he, and he's somehow making money from seizing smuggled vehicles and then the cops get some insane bounty on it you know so it's like right. you know so you know you seize a two million dollar car and we're going to give you like eight hundred thousand dollars and you're just a cop who's doing his job <laughs> Who's doing his job? You know, that's an incentive, um, baby. Yeah. So um, lawful evil. Shit. Oh, shit. Yeah. Okay. Whatever. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah, uh, I think there is uh, a system, and it certainly doesn't. Again, once again, we have to say not all the famous, not all exception. It's not all Thai cops. No, just but, like it's not all bad. Mo- all monks who are bad. It's that's not right. All cops who are but bad. There, there, there's, but there's definitely something systemic in Thailand. That's why it's 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 got to be lawful. So this is not. Right. It's definitely not the one bad apple thing you no. know it's definitely not that i think we're finding out that. that's that's the case about most police forces around the world right it's structural few years. It's, well here you know you can debate about whether it's true in the states or whatever but in thailand there's no debate about it <laughs> it is built in it's right. built in neutral evil typically selfish with no qualms about turning on allies of the moment, usually to further their own goals. They have no compunctions about harming others to get what they want, but neither will they go out of their way to cause damage or mayhem when they see no direct benefit to harming a system that they exploit. And for that, I put in the taxi and tuk-tuk mafia. Interesting. I'm going to have to think about this for a second. Neutral evil. Interesting. So here's one way I think about it. Um, you know these these people they're exploiting often foreigners or it could be uh, Thai people in in dire straits or whatever you uh-huh. know charging uh, fares that are too high like going off meter you know all, all the all the scams right right but at the same time but at the same time they they're not literally trying to hurt their customers they're trying to maintain business so right they're they're not they're not they're out for themselves but. You know, there's probably they probably realize there's certain patterns or rules they have to follow in order to keep their business going. Like they're not, it's right. not they're not like the Joker, just they're not trying to burn down the system because they're make, they need to make money. Right. They you they know? want to squeeze you, but not so hard that you'll die. They want to squeeze you just right. enough that they'll get some money, 
but that's that right. you'll, and that you'll, and you'll come back. Right. They're still doing their job and taking you from here to there. Right. So it's, it's, it's like the, it's, it's productive. They're performing a service, but it's also scam as scammy as they can get away with. <laughs> exactly. <know? laughs> yeah. Okay. They don't want to cause carnage or mayhem when they see no direct benefit to harming a system that they exploit. I think that there you go. There you go. It. All right. And the last one then is chaotic evil and a chaotic evil character tends to have no respect for the rules, other people's lives or anything, but their own desires, which are typically selfish and cruel. And so for this one, there's only one that can fit this, and that is Thai Ghosts. Damn, dude, you are crushing this. Uh, I like this because um, there's such a weird variety of Thai Ghosts. Like, there's no, there's no organization, there's no rules of Thai Ghosts. There's just a bunch of fascinating individual stories. You know, there's, you know, I I could probably name five famous Thai Ghosts, and obviously there there must be dozens. You know, yeah. Um, but they have such unique backstories and mythologies that, you know, m- maybe you could say individual ghosts are following rules, but the ghosts in general are so diverse that right. it's a pretty it's a pretty chaotic mess. It's just yeah, it's just chaos, and you don't know what to believe and what to do right. and who who that's to right. appease, and maybe <laughs> doing right. maybe doing this one thing for this ghost will piss off the other ghost. And I mean, right. in Western cultures, we have ghosts, and they're a little bit scary, but it's more like a like a boo scary. Not like a <laughs> not to screw you up for life, right? <laughs> yeah, like not the crassu, the floating head and intestines in the bathroom that eats shit and chases you. Like, dude, that's terrifying. <laughs> that's scary, man. Like, yeah, so Western well, ghosts it, it, have nothing when it comes to the creativity that goes on right. with Thai ghosts. It does seem that uh, many Thai people are just imprinted or scarred with the knowledge of of, of various ghosts. Yeah. So uh, chaotic evil, I, I think that's a good definition of them because they're just out for their own desires, and which, which are typically selfish and cruel, like revenge or, right? you know. Dude, I got to be honest with you. When, when you pitched this idea, or when you told me you had this old blog post, I, I thought I had, my immediate reaction was, this is a cool thing. But my thinking was, it's going to be really hard to find examples for each one. That was my like first impression. Like, you put some thought into this, dude. I, I like I like your, I like your examples. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, apparently I had a lot of time back in the day, um, <laughs> but uh, yeah, I think it fits pretty well. And like I said, I like I like straining Bangkok through these different filters because it was it sometimes yields some interesting results. Well, so, we've got our seven deadly sins. Now we've got you know that's like a, from a real religion. Then we have the religion of Dungeons and Dragons, <laughs> which is like a social, which is like a social religion. Right. So we we need to come up with another filter. We'll we'll work on it. All right, I'm down for that. If you have any suggestions, listeners, let us know. We always love hearing from listeners. So uh, let us know if you uh, agree or disagree with any of those. We'd be interested to hear your ideas. But there we go. That's Bangkok via Dungeons and Dragons alignment charts. <laughs> All right, let's get into some love, loathe, or live with, where one of us picks a particular aspect of living in Bangkok, which we then discuss and decide if it's something we love about living here, loathe about living here, or have come to accept as something that we just have to learn to live with no matter how we feel about it. And last time, Ed asked me what I thought about GIF replies to text messages. So this week, I'm asking something of Ed. All right, man, hit me. And Ed, um, you may have seen me tweet about this this very day, actually. But uh, what do you think? Now, this is this is probably not going to be a love, but I'm going to see how you feel about it. When your phone rings, and it's an unknown number, and you pick it up right. and you go, <laughs> hello? And the person goes, hello? And you go, hello? And they go, hello? And you go, yes? <laughs> yeah, can, hello? Can I help you? And they go, hello? <laughs> Classic. Uh, well, you're right. I don't think you can really like it. There is something... I don't, not not charming about it. It's just so goofily annoying. It, it, it is annoying, but in a in a, in a in a very goofy way. Like you're <laughs> you want to know like is this happening? Like I just said hello. You called me. Yeah, you called me. This is yeah. where the part where you tell me what you want and who you are. This is the right. something that we've all agreed on as a as a society. <laughs> yes, uh, and it, I, I think there's a couple. You know, there's a couple things going on here. One thing is the is the the realization in their brain. You know, they heard you say hello and they don't hear a Thai accent. So now the whole situation is becoming an ordeal, like in their head, you know, I, you know so they don't know how to respond. Yeah, that's a good point. But I would counter with, I've become very good with my hellos. Hello? That like, <laughs> I can I can say hello as good as a native Thai speaker. Hello. Okay, I don't know about that. We're going to have to get Stu J. Raj on here to figure out if you're 
hello is <laughs> is a good is a good proper intonation rate my hello so i think there's very maybe i'm overconfident but i think there's very little indication when i just say hello that i'm a foreigner dude i can hear you're not a thai person you're That's looking right. at me I'm on sorry. camera you know i'm not a thai person you're <laughs> well, okay we Okay, we'll need to come up with a double-blind, placebo-controlled, randomized <laughs> trial um, to figure out, to, to evaluate your hello. But either, either that or we just go to the expert. We go with uh, Stu J. Yeah. Um, well, what do you think about this? Is this, this uh, for me, this is a loathe. I, I hate this. I'm like, yeah, like now you speak. It's your turn. Go. <laughs> well, I, you know, I'm going to have to go live with only because I'm not charming is not the right thing. It's so silly. And I rarely... <laughs> I mean, I, I guess part of me wants to explode at them, you know, but I never right. do. I never do. So I don't think I could say it's a load. I guess, I guess I've just caved. I'm going I'm to live with. Okay. Well, fair enough. I, I sometimes get a bit too uh, yelly. You I'm get like, testy. Yeah. Okay. What do you want? Who are, who are you? What do you want? <laughs> <laughs> so as we mentioned at the beginning of the show, we'd like to say thank you to Dustin McKay for lending us his support at the show shout out level. Greg, what did you find out about Dustin? Well, Dustin and I shared a couple of nice little uh, messages back and forth, and he's a patron who somehow didn't get the patron email. So patrons, if you're listening to this, um, check your, your, your spam email, because sometimes emails from the patreon.com domain go straight to trash, and we never get in touch with right, the patrons. true that, but, true that. Yeah, but we got in touch with Dustin. Turns out he lives in the same part of the world as our buddy Ash, and that is Brooklyn. Oh, and, wow. Uh, yeah, I don't know if you know this, Ed, but Brooklyn was actually named after David Beckham's son. I, I know. I'm sorry. I did not know that. True story. Yeah. So anyway, he said uh, he's 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 Dustin. He's from Brooklyn. Jack of all trades, and I love the show. Keeps me connected to Thailand when I'm unable to be there. Um, he's got a he's got a very similar story to me, and and, and and I think a lot of people. He says I moved to Utah in 2015 at the behest of a recently arrived friend who told me it's great here. Drop everything and come. Three weeks later, I found myself standing before 50 sets of six year old eyes. I had a dry eraser, an inflatable ball, and an hour to kill. <laughs> I mean, that sounds like it could be a recipe for, for a nightmare, but I guess it worked out. <laughs> yeah, man. I think, I think a lot of people, including me, have found ourselves standing in front of a class of students all staring at you thinking like, well, this guy's an expert in something. And in your mind, you're going, geez, I don't know what's going on. <laughs> <laughs> you're like, how did I get here? <laughs> yeah, that's right. So he says, since that lovely nearly two-year sojourn, I've made it a point to get back annually. That is until COVID. Now check this out, Ed. He says, I was supposed to return on April 1st, 2020 for a cross-country bicycle trip from Maasai to Pedang Basar, top of the head to the end of the trunk. Wow. 1,150 miles over That's the course insane. of about a month. I know, it's nuts. That's insane. Yeah. But uh, my plans were coveted, but I will return on November 1st. I fly into Phuket and do my time there, then stay in Bangkok for a few days visiting with pals, and then head to a rented bungalow in my beloved Utia for a month, where he's going to get back into the swing of things. Very cool. Riding from the top of Thailand to the bottom of Thailand is badass. Badassery. Totally. And he does have a very fun story that's a little bit long, but I'm going to read it because it's very funny and it's very indicative of the kind of adventures that sometimes happen in Thailand unplanned. He says, uh, in 2015, I befriend, befriended my local coconut vendor. One Sunday morning, he took me down to the plantations in Samut Songkram to pick up a load. I was excited to be a part of the process. I thought maybe I'd even get to climb some trees. It didn't quite work out that way. Instead, we dropped the truck off, walked to the main compound, and over the course of about 12 hours, emptied God knows how many bottles of Hong Tong with Coconut Boss, ate multiple rounds of Krapao Gop, which is basil fried frog, and performed various feats of strength with the sinewy muscular old tree climbers, all the while surrounded by heavily armed guards and, of course, the many wives and children of the boss. Wow. He was so inspired by this. He says, in the summer of 2020, during the height of the shutdown in New York City, I was sick of sitting around. I attached a trailer to the back of my bicycle, rode over the Manhattan Bridge into Chinatown, and bought as many coconuts as I could pull, which was about 70. I carted them hazardously back over the bridge to Fort Greene, Brooklyn, filled a 120-quart cooler with coconuts and ice, sharpened my cleaver, and hit the streets. Coco Boys NYC was born. That's oh, man, that is classic. <laughs> that is... That, that that is actually a Thai merit badge. Like even though even though he's in New York, that is a Thai merit. There's only merit one badge. guy in the world. There's only one guy in the world that has that. Yeah, but <laughs> seriously, being inspired so much by like Thailand's coconut culture that you, you you start your own little coconut business in Brooklyn. That's badass. I love it. I love it. Yeah. So Dustin, you got to teach me and Ed how to sort of be inspired and take these little crazy adventures and tangents that everyone has in Thailand and turn them into something 
uh, tangible and beneficial for ourselves. <laughs> That's right. That's right. But thanks for your support, Dustin. And uh, we hope you get back here safe and you get a lot more um, material for further crazy adventures. And uh, yeah, let Thailand inspire you. For sure. Thanks, man. Yeah. And a final thanks to all of our patrons who support the show. Patrons get a ton of cool perks and the warm, fuzzy feeling knowing that they're helping support the show. Find out more by clicking support on our website. And connect with us online. We're Bangkok Podcast on social media, bangkokpodcast.com on the web, or simply bangkokpodcast at gmail.com. We love hearing from our listeners and always reply to our messages. True that. You can also listen to each episode on YouTube. Send us a voicemail online that we'll feature on the show, or even reach out to me directly on Twitter, where I am BKK Craig. So thanks for listening, everyone. Stay safe. See you back here next week. For sure.